How many times did you lose an opportunity in a job interview because you didn't sell your capabilities, despite you were really, really qualified? How many times you were not able to market and sell your idea, despite this idea is very beneficial for everyone? How many times you were not able to get people convinced about yourself, your idea, your opinion, even at home, at work, or anywhere else? Of course, you lost it many times. Do you know why? What is the reason? Because you were not able to sell it. Because you didn't have the selling skills. If you wanted to know how to sell an idea, your profile, your personal capabilities, or even an idea, this is what will be discussed tonight. Please stay with us. Dreams and goals Many mixed emotions in my heart and soul For some I made a plan and did the best I can If God wills things can happen after all I'm just a man Choices, chances, dreams and goals Many mixed emotions in my heart and soul For some I made a plan and did the best I can if God wills, things can happen. After all, I'm just a man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Dear brothers and sisters all over the world, welcome a new episode of Life Choices. And tonight we'll be speaking about selling skills or how to sell your idea or your capability. It's not a must to be a salesperson to get benefit from this episode. Last episode, we spoke about some skills are really required to achieve success in your life. And we'll be taking these skills episode by episode. And tonight we'll be speaking about sales. So first, I would like to welcome my guests, starting with Mr. Muhammad. Welcome. Yeah, thank nice you. having you again on the show. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. I was happy to be here. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. And uh, Mr. Ahmed. Hello, welcome. Welcome in tonight. Welcome. So, and Mr. Abdullah. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, we're honored to have you all. My pleasure. Okay. So last episode, we're speaking about skills are required to achieve success in your life. We were speaking that these skills are like the tools mm -hmm. that will enable you to achieve success in your life, yes. right? And we're spe we were uh, speaking about skills that you will have to possess concerning your personal life, personal some life skills for professional your skills. professional life, yeah. right? Sure. And we spoke about the difference. Yes. And tonight we'll be speaking <coughs> about very, very <coughs> important skill that will serve both your professional life and your personal, personal well. as well, which yes. is selling, selling skills, skills or skills. the sales. Mm -hmm. But I would like to start it with a question. Do <coughs> you have to be a salesperson in order to know about sales? Of no. What you just mentioned right now, it, I shouldn't, uh, it's not necessary to be a salesperson or not, because yeah. if you're speaking about personal life, whatever you do, whatever if you're an engineer, a doctor, or a businessman, Mm -hmm. Whatever your career is, okay. you need to have these kind of selling skills mm -hmm. to in life, in social life. One Perfect. Of one of this, yeah. Very correct. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Mohammed. Mm. Um, no, you don't really have to be a salesperson. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, even in English, when you want to persuade someone, you say persuade. you are selling an idea. Yes. So, basically, you don't... You know, Everyone can be a salesperson. I mean, you just have to convince them that your idea is yeah. the right one. And everyone is a salesperson. I love yeah. this word, yeah, and it was part of, of uh, the idea mm. of tonight. So <coughs> everyone is a salesperson. Why? Because everyone is a customer to mm. everyone, yes. right? And when I speak about sales, I also think, who are the customers? Mm. If you have a sale selling a skill then you are selling something, even if it's an idea or you have a product, product. or service, yeah. all right? Definitely. And when we speak about your personal life at home, who are your customers? My family, your family, my friends, your friends, my neighbors, your neighbors. Everyone in your life is a customer and you have permanent customers mm -hmm. like your kids. Mm. Yeah, your family, just your friends. I have a point to say. Mm -hmm. It's not all related to money, is it? 
not all related to money yes, because that's why it's, it's not the idea that I'll sell you something and mm -hmm. you're going to pay for it. Yes. Sometimes, and I face this a lot in, uh, in work, and I face it, we can say, on a daily basis. We try, as consultants, we try to sell an idea to the client. Exactly. Mm. And sometimes it's a really tough idea because you convince or try to persuade the client in order to do something that they will change the way they do business. Yeah. So we don't sell them a product or service, but we sell an idea. We convince them. And mm. there is uh, something, um, an article, very, very important article concerning selling ideas called The Art of Persuasion. Mm. Actually, it's a small book. It's a book, yeah. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, by Robin Sharma, mm. Mm. this Indian uh, salesperson. How to persuade others, which called the art of persuasion. This is the uh, the title of the book. It's yeah. a very small book, but it's very effective because in order to sell something, you have to persuade the one in front of you that what you are saying worth listening mm. and worth trying what you're saying. Worth believing, worth to act upon it, worth yes. to start to change it, definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. But before we start really, really getting into deep with sales, I'd like to, you and our guests, or our show, to show the competency model, which is a model, it's like a pyramid, that will tell you what are the skills required for each step or each aspect in your life. It's not fixed, and this is for everyone sees us tonight. It is not fixed, but this is the most common. If we see the pyramid, you have in the first layer, these are the skills required in the workplace. And please, our, uh, the people who are watching us tonight, never think that you will be able to achieve or build this complete pyramid <coughs> sorry, in a month or in a year. It takes, it's a it takes a while. Process. It's a lifelong process. And if we see the communication or any, any skill, it continues with your career, but with different level. Mm -hmm. So for me, as my experience, it took me more than five years in order to master these skills, more than five. And during these five years, I had nothing to do but mastering such skills by learning and by experience, both. Mm -hmm. Because just learning, it will be just theories. It has to be learning and experience what you have learned. So right? you're speaking about five years, so it was your, you know... It your took me five years. Your major professionally and academically. Sorry? It was your, your major professionally and academically, and you mastered it in five years. So mm -hmm. have others who are not, you know, who are not specialized in sales or business. So of course it will take longer time. It will take longer time, but um, my advice, y you have to um, to get the academic peril mm -hmm. with the experience. Because I see many people, they take care of their academic life and somehow discarding your professional life in yeah. order to implement what you have learned. Mm -hmm. And this is very crucial. And sometimes, you have learned something, but the reality is something else. Mm. You know what it's like? It is like exactly. There in Malaysia, mm. when you try to get a driving license, uh -huh. yeah. so you pass some tests, right? Mm. The most common that you have s a theory, theoretical test. Theoretical test. Then you go in the field and drive a car, and an expert is sitting beside you to take notes about your driving, right? Yes. Taking the theoretical test, mm. so you read some material. True, oh yeah. They give us books yes. and books have to memorize. you have to study, yeah, and then you study. have to pass the uh, theoretical exam. True. Okay? Yeah. Till now, you didn't try a car yet. Mm. And when you try to drive the car, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. This is the same difference. When you uh, try to acquire a new skill or learn s something new, even soft skills or uh, something technical, like mathematics, finance, etc. What you learn, it gives you the idea or the hint about it. But what you do in the field, it gives you the experience. Because if you do it in a company or in your personal life, if we're speaking something in person, the circumstances really differ. 
It differs from a company to another, and from a family to another, and from a culture to another. Mm -hmm. In Malaysia, it could be something different than an Egyptian family. Sure. Of course it is different. Mm -hmm. Of course. You <laughs> always ha have a theory, mm -hmm. and the, the process of learning the theory is different from applying the theory itself. Yeah. Applying the theory. Thank you, yeah. Ahmed. It is. Applying the theory. And after we know that we show the, uh, the competency model and we know that some skills are really required, in our show we will try to get the most common skills that everyone in every career will get benefit of it, like the sales. And getting back again into deep discussion about the sales. Mm -hmm. We talked about who are your customers. And we said your family mm -hmm. are your customers. Your kids are your customers. Mm -hmm. Your boss is your ultimate customer, actually. The most important one. <laughs> the most <laughs> important one. And there are many, many books these days talking about uh, from the concept that your boss is your customer mm. and how to get the trust of your boss, how to, make you, how to be the boss of your boss. There are many, many books and articles about the subject. Yeah, one of my friends, when I first started work after graduation directly, mm -hmm. he said to me, your, your boss is your father. Yeah. Try to please him and behave with him, and then you get very comfortable, and the work will be very easy for you. Yes, this is very, very, very correct, because I, uh, I witnessed some experience with friends and myself. Uh, it's, not a ma it's not a must or not the, the key uh, success factor to have some skills or, or to be really skilled yeah. or qualifications. Mm -hmm. But the one of the most important, it is the not, uh, not the solo, but one of the most important, <laughs> that you have to really, really manage your boss. Yeah, to have that communication skills and sales skills. Communication and, persuasion and sales, skills exactly. To tell your boss that I am the one among my... Yes, it comes by sales. Yeah. And Amazing. sometimes you sell without you talk. You sell by action. Yeah, mm. action speaks louder. Yes. Yeah, and speaking about selling, you know, you sell everything, you sell love, you sell confidence, you sell... No, we don't sell know. love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, no. It's genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <coughs> you, you make others love you by, by doing something, you know, to, to try to be close to them. So it's, it, it can be considered as selling. It's a selling process. So you offer yourself to others mm -hmm. to, to make them love you and you respect you. You can sell you. emotion to some girl to, to, to convince no, them. No, it's not <laughs> emotion. It's, uh, all right, you do, you do your, your side. And you do yeah. your side. You, uh, you behave in some way <laughs> to make others look at you in a different way. This is what I mean. Yeah. I have a nice comment on this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, what yeah. is it? <laughs> really? <laughs> Come on, say it. <laughs> <laughs> it was around a year ago, and I was uh, having a discussion with an expert in sales. Mm. His real, he's a sales consultant, and he's <laughs> an expert. Uh, he's older than me, around 20 years. And we were speaking, him, me, and his cousin. Yes. And his cousin offered a question. His cousin also working in sales, but in the beginning of the sales career. Mm. And he said to him, who is my ultimate customer. Your wife. Thank you. <laughs> well Thank done. You. How do you know it? Yeah. He can uh, be perfect. I'm not married yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can guess. So you are trained, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then just try to be a salesperson. <laughs> then the sales consultant, he answered, your wife. But there is an interpretation behind the answer. Why it is your wife? Hmm. Because she's the one that you see at the end of your day. Mm. She closes your day. And, and closing your day is like closing a sales call. Yeah. It has to be successful. Mm. Yeah. Mm, there's a saying about that. A happy wife leads to a happy life. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know, really, really speaking, because I, appreci I really, really appreciate the role of the wife in the man's life. Mm. Really. And this is because an expression of wife. That it's the better half. It's the better half. Because if you have a real good wife. Th this is why they choose uh, the, um, the um, what to call the process or the decision to choose yes. that you will continue your life with this person. It is the re really the most critical decision that Crucial. you will take. Even decisions of investments of billions are not critical like marriage decision. Exactly. Especially not the marriage days. itself, but someone, the one who you are going to continue life with. It is very crucial because she could ruin your life or put you on the sky. Yep. Really. So, and this is 
really, really for our audience, young guys. Who's not married yet. Are not married yet or thinking of marrying again. Yeah, never okay. think about <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding about this. Please be careful about this because it has to be shared vision, shared values. We can say shared dreams. She has to believe in your dreams and she has to know what you're, bo what you're talking about. And she sees what you see. She Why believes this? in you. She believes in you. She has to believe in you and your dream. But first, you have to have a dream for her to believe in you. Mm -hmm. And again, to have a plan for this dream. Excellent. Right? Uh, because because you cannot... Saying. Thank you, but you cannot say that I want to be a um, millionaire or having a real estate or being X, Y, Z successful while you're not having a plan. It will stay as a dream. And there is a saying about this. Dreams are not the visions you see while you are sleeping. Mm -hmm. Dreams are the ones that do not let you sleep. Oh, yeah. How beautiful. That's very touching. Mm. Because you will never sleep unless you have a dream and unless you achieve it. If you are really targeting success, you will not be sleeping. Yes. And if we see it by statistics, successful people, and we are talking about the, the pioneers who are speaking of late Steve Jobs, Bill Gates in the beginning, we're speaking about Elon Musk, the great Elon Musk, and people from this category, mm -hmm. they really, really don't sleep a lot, if you are speaking about this, because you cannot sleep more than eight hours a day, and you wait to achieve your dreams. Yes, if you allow me, just uh, I really sure. just got my idea. Um, speak about those who have the dream, they do not sleep, they abandon the sleep, and it becomes not, that not important to them. I remember like um, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallam, sallam, sallam. sent him to be the messenger, and then mm -hmm. he just made a comment like, Mada zaman un nawmi ya Khadija. Yes, So yes, the time yes, to sleep, it, it's, yeah. it's not time again. I have yes. a mission, I have a messenger, I have to invite people to yes. the to Islam. So it was that very comment of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it's no time to sleep again. Yes. We have a mission to do. We have a message to deliver to the world. It, it's you have a mission and you have a plan and you have the intention. You have it from here in order to achieve your plan. And we spoke about this, how to have it from here. Then, believe me, you will not like to sleep. You will really hate sleeping. It's why sleeping is something good, right? It's very, <coughs> it's, it's very good, yeah. It's very good. But yeah. when you have a dream and you have it here, you will not like to sleep and you will hate sleeping. Yes. And concerning about the message, and this is something really, really related to sales. And back again, who is your customer? Your customer have been identified already. Your family, your boss, we spoke about this. So how to sell? How to sell? How to sell? Sell mm. your capabilities. Let's assume that you're in an interview and you're really qualified. Despite this, you're not accepted. Yeah. It happens many times. It happens, it happens a lot, yeah. Lots, lots of times. How many times you have an idea in your work and really, really beneficial idea for, for everyone. Sometimes people, they have ideas about cost reduction. Mm -hmm. And cost reduction ideas are, could be the really most beneficial ideas because you reduce costs. And when we speak about costs in, in the corporate world, no joke. And despite this, they are neglected. Why? Because they didn't sell it right and sell it to the right customer. Then you have to identify your customer first. Right? And this is for our audience too. You have to identify your customer. Who is your customer for the service or the product you want to sell to? Because if we speak about an idea in your workplace. Who is your customer? Could be your boss, could be your supervisor, the one next to your head. Could be your colleague. Like the team I with don't you. recommend a colleague unless you have a team project. Uh -huh. Because you have an idea in your mind. Your colleague will not be able to do something for you. He's on the same level. But yeah. you need this idea to come to the light. Mm. Right? Who will be able to do this? Your boss. 
Sometimes your boss will take it and say, this idea is his. Mm. Yes, and sure. it happens. In the beginning of your life, it happens, and you have to accept it. This is the harsh rule of life, I know. And sometimes it's really, really, really bad. But unless you get tough, you get strong, you get experience, you'll be able to sell out your ideas, and it will be your real ideas. To protect it. To protect it. And speaking about sales, also we cannot forget the word marketing. Mm -hmm. I uh, use the, uh, the word marketing when I have an idea in my uh, workplace. I start to speak about it with some people, and those people will like the idea, and they will start to talk about it with others. They will not, sometimes they don't say that, Ahmed said one, two, three, four, but they speak about the idea itself. Then I guarantee that my idea has been spread, mm. right? Everyone knows about it. And sometimes you find people angst about this. We heard about this, but what it is? Because I give it hints to the people that I guarantee that those people will speak about this idea with everyone they face. Then I had a very, very good step ahead that people are speaking about my idea. Mm -hmm. And I don't speak about it all in order not to be stolen. Just the hint. And then when I go with the complete idea and its solution, people it already know, know, know about it. Mm -hmm. So the resistance became into its lowest level. Everybody, everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. They know about it. They want to know about it. Uh, they know they want to know what is next. They're excited about it. They're excited. The full, complete idea yes. about it. So this is when we speak about the word marketing, and then you start to sell. Yes. I opened the market for my idea. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and speaking for marketing, and this for our audience, you have really, really now very, very good marketing tools, which are the social media. For your professional life, you have LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. You can put your resume, complete resume, your projects, your skills, and it's really, really good marketing tool. And you connect with everyone in the world, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Same saying, you have it with Facebook. But Facebook, I see it a bit more social. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I LinkedIn do, yeah. has the, the complete professional manner. But you have social media. Why not to use it? Yeah, some people use it like writers. Someone who, who yes. writes very good, who starts and to write posts, and it works. Yes. Most of them get jobs. I know some yes. of my friends got jobs because they write very good posts mm -hmm. on, on Facebook. So they have been hired as a script writer in, in a different place. So sometimes it works. Concerning the posts of the Twitter, do you know that the chief of people operations in Google, which is the uh, same level as that chart director in Google, mm -hmm. he said in an article published in LinkedIn, this was a couple of weeks ago, on which basis he could choose or neglect a candidate. One of the lines in the article was, if he didn't or she didn't post anything on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, of course I'll neglect him or her. Mm. If she didn't post anything? Didn't post. He or she, they have no existence on the social media. And it is very logical. Why? Because they are not there in the world. <laughs> if they are not on the social media, then they are not there. And just stay till I see you. Exactly. Mm. So. Now you already marketed your skills. So this your is idea. this is you can say the process of selling. First thing, mm -hmm. when I speak about the process of selling, and we spoke about the marketing. So you okay. open a market or you open a path for your idea. To give like a hint about it to make people excited or yes. willing to listen to your idea. Yes, this mm -hmm. could happen in your workplace and at home. You want to convince that this something <laughs> is <laughs> really a bit could be sneaky for wives, but. <laughs> I, uh, the idea itself, it applies. Let's say that, <coughs> sorry, let's say that you have an idea or um, you want to go somewhere. Or you want to make a decision. You want to make a decision about something mm -hmm. and your wife could be not that good about it. Mm. So you start to talk to your kids about it and how it is good to do this. Yeah, and then the kids, they start to talk about it. Hey, we like this, we like that, we like this. Hey, mom, we like this, we don't like that. Then you come to the wife. The wife already had an idea. She surrendered. She surrendered to the, the kids. kids. Nagging, yeah. But um, 
to be frank, it is 50% guaranteed success. <laughs> Just 50%. There is a 50% risk. It depends right. on life's <coughs> personality. Yes. It depends on the moon. Yes. Strong. We spoke about it and concerning... Yeah, we call her government. So yeah. <laughs> yes. It's yes. <coughs> I heard about this. <laughs> what, is, what do you call them in, in Malaysia? You call them the, the government mm -hmm. as well? No, it, it just... I don't know, the princess, <laughs> princess of the family or something okay. like that. No, I, I like the word wife, actually, not, not anything else. But <laughs> this what will be, um, as we said, she's your ultimate customer. Yeah. And yeah. I really value this word. Your wife is everything to you, really. Great. If you have a good wife, it is one of the, uh, the uh, happiness pillars. And we'll be speaking about this after we get uh, back from the break. So, uh, dear audience, we'll be for a short break. Please stay with us. Don't go anywhere to continue this Life Choices episode about selling skills, how to sell everything. It is a really, really important skill. So, please stay with us. We'll ge be get back to you soon. Imam al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, have indeed uh, did a great and a tremendous job in compiling some of the most beautiful ahadith and the relevant ayat in one of his marvelous works, which is known as Riyadh al-Salihin, or Gardens of the Pious. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all amongst the dwellers of Gardens of the Pious. Jannat al-Na'im, Allahumma ameen. TV commercials motivate viewers into immediate action and to sway consumer loyalty from one brand or service to the other. That's why we're here for you, to help you sell your products and services by using creative ideas that bring life into your own TV commercial. Advertise your business and branded products and services on Huda TV. We will offer you fast-paced and energetic 30-second affordable TV spots. Advertise on Huda TV, acquire fresh customers and stay within your budget. For more info or to receive a quote, please send your inquiries to Advert at Huda TV. Huda TV. Since Huda TV first launched in 2005, the channel has been striving to extend its broadcast to cover every corner of the globe. We're already live through satellite in the Middle East, parts of Europe, and Africa, and via web streaming around the globe. Today, Huda TV is pleased to offer glad tidings to its viewers in the United States of America. Huda TV is now available for broadcast on the Galaxy 19 satellite on the following parameters. Satellite, Galaxy 19 at 97 degrees west. Transporter, 28. Frequency, 12184. Polarization, horizontal. FEC, 3 over 4, SR 22000. We're thankful to Allah that Huda TV's English programming is now available to all our viewers in America. And we promise you to bring you more upscale productions day by day. Tune in to Huda TV on Galaxy 19 right now. Huda TV, a light in every home. Welcome back again, our audience, after the break. And we're still speaking about 
sales, how to use sales as a skill that will provide you success in your life, how to use it in your home, in your personal life, in your workplace, everywhere with everyone. It's not a must to be a salesperson in order to use or learn about sales. And we're speaking still about sales, and before the break, we're speaking about uh, the ultimate customer, mm -hmm. the wife. Mm -hmm. The government. And yes, <laughs> the government <laughs> or the wife. And speaking about sales itself, I see it persuasion. I see it belief of the idea. And the word believe, really, really crucial here. Because if you don't believe in your idea or in your product mm -hmm. that you are trying to sell or persuade anyone in front of you, they will not buy it. Because right. you will say it with hesitation. Because you're not hesitation. Me. You don't have it in heart. You will not have it in your tongue. You won't care, like if they accept it or not. So sometimes you will not care, and sometimes you will fall into some details that are really, really critical for the the customer to buy in, mm -hmm. and you will not mention. You have to really have it here in order to convince your customer with yes. it. And, and speaking about this, you know, uh, I, I think everybody should be an artist. You know, the the painter. You you have you have uh, your ideas when you paint and draw something in your gallery. In you have your the gallery, so you, you expose your ideas to the to the audience through the gallery. So you ha should have your own gallery. You should make your ideas come come to light. Yes. Through your gallery, so you you make everything clear in front of your audience, in front of your customers. I really like this, but not every time, Ahmed, and not with everyone, and not in every culture. Um, because actually, you know what? Your idea, I consider it something precious when you have an idea. Because mm -hmm. sometimes nations change to the better or to the worse through an idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but so you are the idea only is something one. that's really, really crucial expensive if it is a good idea so so it's the same with the painter same with the painter but if you have it as a gallery you have it on shelf you expose it to customers who could refuse it mm. no your idea should be seeking for people seeks your ideas this is why you throw a hint that will bring the customer to you to know more about it well, but if you strongly believe in your ideas you know you 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 think I think if you strongly believe in your ideas and that they are very good and you know uh, applicable, mm -hmm. um, I think it the percentage of being refused is so low, isn't it? Not every time. You know why? Via statistics made over all over the uh, the sales uh, industry all over the world, customers like to spend effort mm. for the. the 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 thing or the product or the service they buy, uh, they yeah. buy and pay money or they buy it. they buy in to be convinced with. Yes. Right. So you may you have to make your customer spend some effort for your idea to be precious to him. Let's take an example. If I give you a diamond now and you didn't spend an effort with it, will you really really care about it? No. Okay. It's a gift. I it's a free. I I it's free. It's free. But what I if you free. get to Sierra Leone and you you really really survive death and being shot to have a diamond and they came back to Egypt? You will take care about it, right? Of course. Yeah. Why? Because it's you, your you spent effort. an effort. Yeah. You, know, you exaggerated some effort for. You were so about to lose your life. You made it worth it. Right? Same with customers. You have to make the customer spend some effort in order to buy your idea or buy your product. So I believe the experience in getting the product that is much more mm -hmm. worth it to the customer than, the <coughs> than, than getting the thing itself. Yes. Oh. You have to get the customer coming and willing to know more. You have to get the customer asking you, what does it do to this? How can I get benefit to? Once your customer started to ask you questions, this is the first step to succeed that you convince and sell and your, your product idea, idea, product, service, whatever, to your customer. Mm -hmm. Once they start to ask, because if they ask, they are, in they are interested. 
Yeah, intrigued. Yeah. So speaking of this marketing thing and the question thing, what what other process in, in the sales? What is the process of sales itself as, as a whole sure. process? Yeah. Actually, there is a worldwide standard sales process, mm -hmm. but we'll not be able to display it here to our audience as a PowerPoint because it's something like exclusive because we cannot be uh, shared in public. But first, you have to identify your customer. Okay. And then you have to identify the need of your customer. Mm. Yeah, that's my point. You know, we, we've been speak speaking for a long time about our side as sellers. How about the customers? I just I, I, I'd like to ask about their mentalities and how, how they deal with you, how they, when, how they think about buying something from you. This is something we, we always teach in sales when we teach sales to, uh, to new sellers. But not always you'll be able to know or get the information about the mentality of the customer. Not always. Sometimes you have the information, then there's something good. Mm. But sometimes you don't. And most of the time you don't have information about the mentality of your customer. But you have to know and do really, really good exercise and work about the need of the customer. What does the customer need? Where is the pain of the customer? To uh, make an estimated guess as you to what he wants. You can make an estimated guess, yeah. but this estimated guess comes through previous data. Mm, from not be just experience. assumption. Oh, because assumption. the first rule in sales, never do an assumption. N now we're speaking about the concept oh. of offer and demand. It's supply and demand, yes, but in today's economy, the supply and demand is not as we know it in economics. Mm. Why? Because you really now, these days, you see people, they buy things that you will, they will never use. So you need to create you the supply create. and the demand. Actually, I uh, don't... The demand. <laughs> I, I say, like, if, if you need to create the to demand. To create the demand by making the, your customer feeling that they want, mm. they need this, they because need there is this. a difference between yes. they need and they want. Yeah. Mm. The best uh, example about this, Apple computers. When you have a laptop, and you have a laptop by Apple, why people, they get, or they like Apple computers? By the way, this is not a commercial for Apple, but Apple products became number one valuable products this year. All right? And for many years, when it comes to technology. This year, mm -hmm. Apple became number one valuable product worldwide. It took the first and the second ranks, too, for two <laughs> products. I think uh, MacBook Pro and uh, MacBook Air, I think, mm. or iPhone, I think. So getting back to this, you have to convince your customer, and you have to be really, really frank about it, because not to convince the customer that they need this, why <coughs> they don't need this. God bless you. I know that you have called, and thank you for being up <laughs> while you are uh, really, really sick about this today. <coughs> so, if we speak about this and creating the demand or making, pay making people the feel that they want your service or product or your idea, you have to show them that they really need, because sometimes your customers, they don't see the need. Definitely. And you have to dig in your mind about your idea or service or product, what you can offer to the customers. Yeah, I, I remember like an example about it, just um, someone want to sell a pen. Yes. And a pen is, why should I sell a pen? Is it like, I don't need a pen. Mm -hmm. So he made an argument with the guy, he doesn't know him, he just like met him in the restaurant. Yeah. He made that guy need a pen to write something. They walk the Wall Street. So uh, he made yeah, yeah. this guy <coughs> need the pen, and then he sold it to him. Yes, and, and I, I saw this in the movie, which is The Wolf of Wall Street. And by the way, um, this movie was for, um, it's, it's a real story. It's a real story, yeah. Okay, Based and on this person story. is a, uh, one of the sales masters worldwide, without mentioning his name. But yes, because he created mm -hmm. demand. You wanted him to, to do that? Yes. Write me a check. Okay, I need a pen to write. Okay, here's a pen, one dollar. Yes, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you have not to create, to find. Because sometimes creating the supply and demand is being something misunderstood in many times. You have to find the demand. What your customer need to do. Yet sometimes we find, for, for my industry, we find opportunities 
for the customers. Opportunities that they didn't notice, but we noticed and we tell them about it. And in order to get this opportunity for your benefit, you have to take my service. Mm. Mm. Like for example, I, we were working on it with a, a real estate company and we did some research in the market, etc. One of the, uh, of the findings that the market has 47% uh, as a market size in certain real estate industry, which was the compounding. And then we convinced them through this research that you have an opportunity to grow with 47%. By investing in this particular field? Like this. Investing in this particular field and taking our service as consultants mm. to guide you in this. Mm. Yeah. They bought it. We found them demand. Yeah. Right? Getting back again to the sales process. We spoke about finding your customer, yeah. finding the need, yes, and the selling itself. When you discuss it with your customer, mm -hmm. sometimes people, or salespeople, or anyone trying to sell, they get really, really hurry to finish the call. They are in hurry. They want to convince you. In a short time. In a rush. In a shorter time, you mean? In a shorter time. They want to close the call. They want to close the, the call quickly. Mm. So that the other people won't change their mind. Close up. They are not convinced. Mm. You know why? <coughs> uh -huh. They get worried. Yeah. The longer the time it gets to yes. close, the longer the yeah. time that he has to worry. You have to get the customer to tell you, okay, I'll buy it. Mm. Never offer the customer Okay, you'll buy it. Oh, you mean like... Never give I them time to think. Mm. Or maybe. Time. <laughs> in, in sales, we call it probe. You have to probe to the customer. And once the customer say, okay, I agree, you ju just give the idea or the service or the product. Nothing more. But if you took a rush, it will blow up your sales. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. So this is simply the sales process. And for the sales, never give <coughs> or you offered an idea, just the idea. Nothing less, nothing more. Make a kind of suspense around the idea. If you suspense have more details, about the idea less resort. the customer anxious about it, mm -hmm. want to know about it. But sometimes people, they say, Getting something more will add something good. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you tell <coughs> them the whole story, mm -hmm. um, they won't need you anymore. They will not need you anymore. Just make so don't the last offer resort. the whole cake. Mm. And sometimes you offer something extra mm. on your sales, but they are like the spice that blow up the whole cook. Mm. Just the idea as is. 100% of it. Not a 98 not a hundred and one, just the idea. Nothing more, nothing less. And this is very crucial, by the way. Yeah, it is. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, Ahmed, you said something that's really, really, uh, <coughs> sorry, I liked it. Make people... Uh, to buy anything. To buy anything or how people buy. We are discussing this during the break. I... I Yes, buying how the, the mentality of the people, mm -hmm. how how they think. <coughs> now I'm I'm am coming to you, so um, I just want to be convinced. Mm -hmm. So as as a customer, uh, what what do what do the customer what does the customer need to be mm -hmm. convinced? I mean, you 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 work on their their the way the way of thinking. You're not you know you're not doing only your job. Now when you when you want to get someone, you have you have your own your own part you, know, you are in the pitch <coughs> so you have to get into his mind okay explore his mind and then you will figure <coughs> it out <coughs> so you think think about your you, you may adjust your way of exposing you know mm -hmm. your way of um, selling generally 
actually, I see this because um, in our show we uh, we address many cultures, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I see that the uh, the selling process it differs from culture to another. Yeah, really. True that. And we can have your uh, your comment about it in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. You are a customer. Yeah. How do you buy? How do I buy as a customer? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, do you have money first? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you mean by buying stuff like um, products? Any stuff. Uh, any stuff. stuff. Yeah, usually in Malaysia, we, we search the product first. I mean, let's say I was going to buy a phone. Mm -hmm. And then um, we go to the internet and see the uh, capacity of the phone, the usage, what can we do with mm -hmm. the phone and stuff like that. So I might, I, I'd say that the customer in Malaysia is quite <coughs> informed, mm -hmm. very well informed. Okay. So sometimes it's pretty hard to sell something to them because they already have something in mind. Okay, they have information before they yeah, go they to, the, to the buy. They have information, so... Mm -hmm. <coughs> It, it, it depends, mm -hmm. actually. Um, it depends. So if we run this exercise as Muhammad in Malaysia mm -hmm. and Ahmed in Egypt and Abdullah in Egypt, mm -hmm. right? If I come with you with the phone mm -hmm. and I start to buy you this, to sell you this phone, I start to ask you, what do you need in the phone? What do you really need in the phone? Now, we need it to call. You need it to call. And yeah, I mean, during these times, you need to we need it to uh, serve the internet okay. and the camera. The camera. The camera. And, uh, Pro camera, like sixteen megapixel something. It depends. I mean, for me, I don't <coughs> I don't really care. Mm -hmm. Two megapixels. Well, you okay. don't really care. I'm yeah. I'd like to stop with you. This. What about you? Well, I think uh, it's not much different from mm -hmm. them. We needed to take photos to sometimes play games. <laughs> play games. <laughs> we didn't mention yes. games. <laughs> but he looks so small. He has no time to rest. I think. <laughs> 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 so this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes <coughs> the features differs, mm -hmm. right? And I see that the more time you spend planning your sales call, your idea, you know what you're talking about, the more successful you will be able to sell it. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Because you have a much clearer idea of the Clear thing that idea. you're about to sell. <coughs> about what you are trying to sell. And if mm -hmm. you are convinced, of course, your customer will be convinced. Yeah, I, I would like to mention something because I used to work in a kind of call center and part of it is okay. to some sales call, some product mm -hmm. to our, our culture. So the thing is about is, first of time, I wouldn't care. Do you want to buy something? Mm -hmm. So the customer say no, just like something like this. But when I got some training from, from my, my boss or something, he said, you need to make <coughs> some excitement about the call and to, to ask him, do you have something or not? Mm -hmm. And then he will start to engage with you to see how much how's it. Like I so believe the this. tone of your voice. Um, the tone yeah. is a very, very, very crucial factor or aspect in your sales call. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you speak and <coughs> very excited about it and sometimes it's over loud to the customer, the customer will leave you. And they sometimes are not you're sleepy. And sometimes sleepy. Right. Can, can we say make balance? Can we say you're just like a spider weaving <coughs> a cobweb? Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like the word balance. You are balanced. Mm -hmm. You are not really, really uh, excited about it or um, speaking loud about it. And at the same time, you are not sleepy while you are speaking. You are serious and funny at the same time. Mm -hmm. Serious and funny. And this is a very, very combination like you have crucial combination mm -hmm. that you really have to master. Right, but finally you have to get you know, you have to get the the customer into your own cobweb. Own cobweb, okay. No, not so to think about design. anybody okay. else. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to have any chance to think about anybody else. Any other Okay. There's no other choice. You're the only one in front of me or the best of all. So yes, correct, but I see it from the discussion that sales is crucial skill. Is it time? Right? Mm. Is it time? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do we agree on this? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, of course. We spoke about the sale, the process, how to identify a customer, and how it is as a skill for the success of your life. Definitely. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. So by the end of our show tonight, 
would like to thank Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Ahmed, thank you Mr. Abdullah. Thank you. thank you for our audience for following us. Thank you so much. And be with us next week. We'll have a new skill to speak about it. Thank you so much. Good night. Chances, dreams and goals Many mixed emotions in my heart and soul For some I made a plan and did the best I can If God wills things can happen after all I'm just a man Choices, chances, dreams and goals Many mixed emotions in my heart and soul For some I made a plan and did the best I can if God wills things can happen after all I'm just a man Ooh.